Hey, this is Jerry from Blue Studio, and in this particular tutorial, I am going to cover Ken Shape. And you're saying, hey, what's Ken Shape? Ken Shape is a great little 3D voxel tool put out by Kenny. And if you're ready to start creating some cool 3D, let's go. So here we're on the Ken Shape website. So tools.kenny.nl. Now, this is a great tool that you can use to create voxel art. So you can go ahead and you can download it from here where you say buy, so you can buy, it's $3.99, so it doesn't cost very much at all. So you can uh, buy this both on itch.io and the Epic Game Store. There's also the supporting documentation, which I would highly recommend going and reading. So here's the supporting documentation. Again, there's not much here because it's an extremely simple tool, but for what it does, it is awesome. If you're running Mac like I am, you're like, whoa, this is only PC. Well, you can run it on your Mac. So there's a great website that you can go to, and I'll have a link down in the description below that tells you how you can install it on your Mac. So I've done that on my computer and it works perfect. So let's go ahead and go into Kinshape and let's take a look. All right, so here I'm in the tool. In the upper left-hand corner, you can see that I've got the option for creating a new document, opening and uh, loading an image. And right here, you see that I've got the option for different size models. I usually go ahead and just start with a 32 by 32. I think if you're doing 32 by 32, it works just great. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on 32 by 32. So let's take a look at the interface. So over on the very left-hand side, you can see that we've got options for different types of brushes. Now these are different shapes of brushes. So if I select a color, and put a, a pixel down, it's going to be in that shape. So if I add a shape that is the triangle, you can see how that works. If I hold down the shift key, you'll notice that all of those rotate. So you can draw different rotations of those tools just by hitting the shift key. And of course, if I draw any of those pixels, it then just fills it in. So that's gonna give you a lot of different drawing options. So let's go ahead and go across the top. The first option up here is the pencil. So that is the tool that we use to draw. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. The next is a line tool, so it allows you to drag out a line. The next is the fill tool, so it allows you to fill both pre-existing pixels or if you click outside of any existing pixels, it fills the whole space. And then the next three options are if there's mirroring or if not. Okay, so let me go ahead and just select a color. Currently, I don't have mirroring on, so it's not mirroring. If I click the next item over, it's mirroring. You can see that there is a line that's drawn here and it's now mirroring uh, both the top and the bottom. So it's mirroring vertically. And if I click on the next one, it's going to mirror horizontally, okay? So let me just undo all of this. If you are drawing, if you right click, it's going to erase anything you have. Okay, so those are the tools. It's super, super simple. Now let's go over here on the right hand side. You can see that there is a palette. The palette is limited to 16 colors. You can import your own palette, which is really cool. So if you have a tool that you like to use, uh, like Photoshop or something, you want to create your own palette specifically for your artwork, you can import that. Uh, Kenny has a great link off of the Kenny website that allows you to Let's go to this website, lowspec.com. I'm gonna go leave a link down in the description. And it allows you to go ahead and find palettes that you can then import. So in this case, again, the max you can have is 16 pixels. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a max of 16 pixels. And that's going to give me a lot of different options here. I can find one that I like and go ahead and download that. So let's just go ahead and choose this one. So I'm gonna hit download palette and I'm gonna choose PNG 1X. So it opens it in a new browser. I need to go ahead and save this file. So I'm gonna go ahead and save as, and I'm just gonna save it to my desktop and versatile, versatile 16 pixel. Okay, so that works. So let's go ahead and go back over to Kenny real quick. I'm gonna click on the little palette icon in the upper right hand corner. And here I need to go ahead and install that palette. So here you can see that it's versatile 16X. I wanna go ahead and open that. And now you can see my palette has changed. So I can go ahead and now start drawing from these pixels. Cool. All right, so this allows me to kind of draw out pixels, but it's not really giving me the depth. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw out a little building real quick. 
I wanna make sure that I have horizontal mirroring turned on and let's go ahead and draw this out. So I wanna give my building a base and then I'm gonna go ahead and just draw out what the building could be. And then I'm just gonna use my fill tool to fill that in. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw out some windows. So let's choose my color. Maybe this is some kind of a storefront. And then we need windows on the top. And then I need some kind of top across the building. So let's go ahead and just add that as well. Yeah, so that kind of looks okay. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off mirroring and then let's add something in here that makes it look a little more like a door on the front or a set of doors maybe. Yeah, so I think that looks pretty good. So here's where the power of Kenshape comes in. I'm gonna go ahead and go into the depth mode. So down at the very bottom, we have the drawing mode, then we have the depth mode. So you can see that here I have each of the pixels has a one on it. So this is the current depth. So if I click on model, you can see that it's at a depth of one. So it gives it kind of this one pixel block structure. All right, so I'm gonna go back into depth and you can see that I've got eight options here. So one through eight. So every time I draw a number, it's going to make it that deep. So I'm gonna go ahead on the very bottom, I'm gonna go ahead and make this eight. So I'm gonna just draw out eight. And then you get a little preview of what that looks like down here in the bottom. Of course, you can always go to model so you can see what that looks like. So let's go ahead and just draw the rest of this building out. I'm gonna go ahead and draw eight across the top. And then the whole entire front, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a seven. And let's just fill this. So I'm gonna fill that with sevens. So in the windows, I'm gonna go ahead and just make those sixes. Now let's just see what that looks like real quick. So you can see how now they're slightly inset. So let's go ahead and just finish those off real quick. Go back to my model. And here you go. Now it does seem like it's a little bit on the thin side for building. So here we can actually take the scaling, which is the depth scale. It allows me to make that a little bit deeper. So it's taking every cube that makes up this object and stretching it, okay? So um, all of the, the insets that I have here are getting just a little bit deeper. So you'll have to keep that in mind if that's something that you want or not, but you can see how you can increase the scale of the building. A little more square in its footprint. Now we're ready for export. So let's go ahead and click export. And now I have some options here. For me, I'm using everything for game design. So I can go ahead and uh, select either OBJ or FBX files. For Unity, I go ahead and usually choose FBX files. And I also have the option of choosing texture of an atlas or an unwrapped. Now there's an advantage to each of these. If it's an atlas, it's going to assign a color for every pixel face of that game object. If you select unwrapped, it's going to unwrap the UV map of that, which gives you some advantages as well because you can then take that and you can then draw on it and it rewraps it automatically back to the game object. So I usually go ahead and just use unwrapped. That's my personal preference. And then you can de determine if you want the if you want it optimized or not, by default it's turned on, so I'm gonna go ahead and just leave that as it is. And then you can choose a scale. Once you've done that, then you can go ahead and click export. So I'm gonna go ahead and export that, and it's choosing, telling me, hey, where do you wanna save this? And I'm gonna go ahead and call it building. Hit save. And now that's over on my desktop. So let me go ahead and pop over into Unity. And I'm gonna go ahead and just add that. So when I do save that, it saves both a the FBX file as well as a PNG file. So I just need to have those in the same folder in my game, game structure. 
So I have a folder called model and I'm just gonna drag both of those in there. So both the building and the PNG file together. So I'm gonna go building, drag that in, and now I can just take that game object and bring it in and now here it is. So you can see how this translates over into Unity. Really, really simple. Now, the only problem that I have with this is that the PNG file um, by default is at 128 by 128 pixels, which is really, really small. So I'm gonna go ahead, go ahead and open up this image in Photoshop. So here my, here's my image. It is currently 256 by 256 uh, pixels. And so what I wanna do is go ahead and go to image size. And then I'm, I'm going to scale this up to be 1020, 1024 by 1024. And then I'm always resample to, if I want this to be nice and clean, I'm gonna go ahead and resample it with nearest neighbor hard edges, okay? So if I do that, it doesn't destroy the image or doesn't blur the image as it scales it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and just save that. It doesn't really change the uh, file size. And let's go ahead and go back over into Unity. And now you can see it's nice and clean. Great. So there is Kenshape. It's a great tool. It's only $3.99 and I, I would highly recommend using this. I'll do a couple videos using Kenshape and creating voxel art just for game objects. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that tutorial and this is a great tool for you to pick up and use in your game design. Please share and don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and that little bell icon down there so you know when the next tutorial is available. Until next time, peace.